folks. So the other day I posted a video on TikTok about the root cause of stubborn candida overgrowth and why some people are doing antifungals and following candida diets for 5, 10, 15, 20 years sometimes. And every time they stop the protocol, the candida comes back. Right, so there are these folks who have these really stubborn symptoms of gut dysbiosis and they're doing all the things and it doesn't seem to address the issue. Um, and this is because, and I, I um, want to credit Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride here in her blue book where she really lays this out beautifully, so I definitely encourage you to read that uh, if you're able to. Um, but she argues that we have to understand the function of some of these pathogens uh, in a, a, a greater ecosystem, right? And the role that fungus plays in an ecosystem is often to detoxify soil, right? Uh, Candida has an incredible ability to pull toxins out of soil, uh, especially heavy metals. And so she argues that candida is often really playing a protective role in our body. It's buffering us from heavy metal toxicity in our tissues, right? And so if you are just trying to kill off candida or take away the fuel that is feeding the candida, uh, but you're not addressing the underlying toxicity, um, you may just be suppressing um, actually like a side effect system, uh, symptom of a deeper issue. So I wanted to talk more about that because a lot of people commented like, okay, that's great, but then how do I deal with the heavy metal toxicity, <laughs> right? Um, so one thing that's really important to recognize is that sometimes antifungals don't take because your immune system is not strong enough to uh, support that kind of process. Uh, of, of purging an excess of bacteria, of um, fungus. And again, if there is heavy metal toxicity in the tissues, your body just may not allow that to happen, right? And a candida diet is not necessarily a microbiome reset diet. It's not necessarily a diet that promotes detoxification. So I think it's very important to give yourself a t some time just to do some foundational practices to reset the immune system, rebuild the microbiome, support the detoxification pathways, and see if that can get at the underlying heavy metal toxicity. I see a lot of people wanting to jump the gun here, and before they've really done a thorough microbiome reset and really um, uh, brought a lot of the, the foods and the supplements in they're gonna help, that are gonna help support their detoxification pathways, they wanna go straight to like addressing the heavy metals specifically and aggressively. And I don't think that that's actually necessary for most people. I think if you're going to address heavy metal toxicity directly and aggressively, that's actually going to be a smaller percentage of the population uh, that is going to require that. Um, so really do some of these other practices that I promote in terms of a microbiome reset diet and uh, natural traditional ways to support detoxification pathways and often people's bodies will just spontaneously start getting at that root issue. You give your body the right raw materials and the right support and often it will just spontaneously start doing that work. You will start uh, having symptoms of detox and then you will feel so much better <laughs> afterwards, right? So the body will often take on that work just spontaneously when it is supported correctly. Um, so this is different than just a candida diet or an antifungal. Uh, this is like a full microbiome reset diet and natural ways to support detoxification. If you want to learn more about that, I do have other videos and I do have courses on my website that really detail how to go about this work. So check that stuff out. Now, if you have been doing those practices for one to two years and you still have stubborn symptoms, either of candida overgrowth or a microbiome imbalance, you have symptoms of gut dysbiosis still, um, you have chronic fatigue, uh, you have other symptoms that are just really stubborn and you can't get at, then it's appropriate to start addressing some of that stuff directly because despite giving your body, you know, as, as quality, uh, nutrient dense raw materials as possible, sometimes it's just not quite enough if you are just compromised to an extent, right? Um, so <clears throat> it is appropriate at that point to really start targeting this stuff. I was one of those people. 
you know, so uh, this is not like a personal failing or anything you did wrong. I had so many symptoms uh, improve and go into remission just by doing the diet and supplement and lifestyle stuff. Uh, but there were things that were lingering for me that I had to address directly. Now, if I could go back, I would probably directly address them differently now <laughs> than I did then. Uh, but uh, it made the world of a difference for me to really target heavy metals specifically. And so it is something that uh, is totally appropriate to look at. Um, I'm going to go over some ways to start that process. So the first is to be really aware of your mineral status, because a lot of times what happens for people is that heavy metals have actually replaced minerals in their cells and their bones and other places in their tissues where we need minerals, right? Some heavy metals can have um, similar properties to like essential minerals, right? Uh, even though they're toxic, they can also perform some of the same enzymic properties. And so sometimes if we've had a mineral deficiency from the time we are children and, you know, standard American diet is very low in minerals, uh, we can really hold on to heavy metals that we are exposed to in our environment because they're taking on some of those functions, right? And so then the body is like, well, no, I'd rather have this than nothing, right? I'll die if I have nothing to do this process, right? So sometimes when you really boost your mineral status, uh, again, your body will spontaneously be like, oh, okay, I don't need these heavy metals anymore. I've got the real deal. This is much better, <laughs> right? So the first thing to do, I would say, would be very, very conscious of your mineral status. So for a lot of people, this is going to look like supplementation. You know, high dose supplementation of minerals uh, is going to be really helpful. Some of this could include something like zinc, uh, which often replaces uh, lead replaces in the body um, or iodine. Uh, which things like uh, fluoride and uh, bromide uh, will replace in the body. And so some people end up having to do a fairly high dose supplementation of these minerals for a while to replenish their status. Um, the other thing would be trying to get as many minerals naturally from your diet and environment as well. Uh, unrefined salt, high amounts. <laughs> I'm always telling my clients to eat more salt. Uh, and uh, dairy is another great plate, um, source of minerals in the diet. Um, and seafood can also be a really great source of minerals in the diet. Of course, a lot of seafood also has high levels of heavy metals, so you have to be cautious around this and do it uh, very targeted. Try to get the lowest toxin seafood you can. There's resources out there to, to help you learn uh, what the safest sources of seafood are, um, but very, very high in minerals. Um, so that can be very helpful. Uh, also, mineral water, bottled mineral water, not the most environmentally sustainable thing to do, but uh, a lot of our drinking water just has hardly any minerals in it, and when you look at traditional societies, a lot of times they're drinking like silty hard water, right? Uh, and they know the, just traditionally, right, as a part of their culture, they know that this has like life-giving benefits to drinking like the hardest glacier silt water <laughs> they can find, right? So we have a huge lack of minerals in our water. Um, and uh, so drinking bottled mineral water can be helpful for that. Um, as much as you can exposing yourself to natural uh, sources of water as well. So swimming in oceans and lakes and rivers and natural hot springs as much as possible is going to really benefit you as well. Uh, some people talk about making sure you're eating a lot of plants and vegetables because they're going to have higher amounts of minerals generally than animal foods. Um, but they're getting it from the soil, right? Like they don't just inherently have these minerals in them. They're pulling them up from the soil and unfortunately, a lot of soil either is polluted with heavy metals uh, or uh, is um, uh, just devoid, right? We have so much dead soil uh, in, in the world now from uh, poor agricultural practices. So we're just really not getting those minerals from those vegetables in the way that we should be. Um, and it can give us heavy metal toxicity. I need to make a video sometime about how I got thallium toxicity from eating kale. <laughs> it's a great story. Um, so uh, the other thing is that we want to be mindful of oxalates. Uh, I have several other videos on oxalate toxicity, uh, so go back and look at those. I'm not going to go into it because it's a huge topic, uh, but a lot of plants that are high in minerals are also high in oxalates, and these oxalates bind to minerals and don't allow you to absorb it. So I don't usually recommend high amounts of vegetables in the diet as a great way to um, or other plants in, as a great way to get minerals in your diet, but those other ways uh, probably are going to be more beneficial. 
the other thing, uh, after you make sure that you have enough minerals in your body, that your body is not relying on heavy metals to do those processes, uh, you want to look at your mitochondrial health, right? Like on the level of the cell, are you, uh, do you have the tools to detoxify, right? Um, so some of this is going to be just general lifestyle practices that are just supportive to overall health that are going to make your cells more able to detoxify on a nightly basis, right? So getting proper amounts of sleep, getting proper amounts of sunlight, right? Uh, doing proper amounts of stress reduction practices, keeping your nervous system in as calm a state as possible and uh, a, a state where you can sleep very, very deeply, right? So you get maximum time for detoxification heat and cold therapy. Uh, basically what that does, uh, exposing yourself to extreme heat like a sauna or extreme cold like in cold therapy like ice plunges, right, or cold showers, um, you're basically killing off <laughs> the weakest mitochondria. <laughs> so you're basically uh, promoting uh, health of your mitochondria by killing off the weakest ones and kind of forcing your body to make new ones, right? This is also how fasting works, right? So if you stress out your body uh, just the right amount, <laughs> you won't kill yourself, but you will kill all the weak mitochondria that are not behaving as efficiently as they could be. Um, so things like heat, cold, fasting uh, are going to benefit just how you can detoxify from the level of the cell also. All right. Um, so then we also just want to talk about the health of the liver, right? Because heavy metals are fat-soluble toxins. So they're going to be processed through the liver. And so we want to make sure that all three phases of detoxification that are happening um, are really, really efficient. Um, and so uh, for phase one and two, for example, um, which uh, is what converts the toxins into something that the body can actually excrete, um, we need high levels of amino acids in the diet, right? So um, that is when, uh, that is why uh, foods that are really, really rich in a balance of amino acids can be really important to detoxify. And this is why when people are on the meat stock soup diet, they will often spontaneously start detoxing, right? I've had people who have been on really good clean diets for long periods of time and they start the high amounts of meat stock and they have all sorts of detox reactions from it. And it's because they're getting these high amounts of amino acids in their diet that is allowing their detoxification process in the liver to jumpstart. Um, so this is especially the amino acids glycine and methionine. Um, and so you're going to be getting it from the collagenous uh, cartilage rich um, cuts of meat. So this is why eating meat on the bone uh, is so important. Eating all the little cartilage bits <laughs> off your meat is so important. Uh, why getting skin on pork and chicken is so important. Uh, these are the nutrients that your liver really needs to be efficient with these processes. Uh, glutathione is a big one too. Uh, this is really important in the liver's detoxification process as a nutrient. Uh, it's actually very high in onions and garlic, which is why they say onions and garlic are so good for the immune system. Uh, so if those are vegetables you can tolerate, eat those every day. Uh, and then supplementation such as ALA, NAC, and cordyceps mushrooms can also help support uh, the, the production of glutathione. Uh, that's why people use them for detox, because they help make glutathione. Anything bitter you can have in your diet also helps stimulate the liver. Um, so this is often why you will see like these liver supportive tinctures, right? And they have plants like dandelion, burdock, artichoke, beet, chicory, um, milk thistle, right? It's because they are bitter herbs that uh, stimulate the, the liver to produce more of uh, these compounds that are going to help you detoxify. Uh, so those kinds of herbal supports can be really beneficial as well. And then you want to make sure they're getting out of your body <laughs> also, right? Uh, so this is where um, making sure that you're having regular bowel movements is really important because again, fat soluble toxins, heavy metals, right? Uh, so they're going to go through the liver and then they're going to come out in your bile, uh, which comes out in the stool. Right, so you're basically going to be pooping out any heavy metals that you are um, detoxifying. Uh, that's how they're going to get out. So you want to make sure you're having regular bowel movements, 
things like enemas or colonics can be really helpful um, when you're going through a process like this just to make sure you're getting everything out um, and then binders can be really helpful too uh, just so you're not um, pulling this stuff out of the tissue and then it's just kind of sitting there and not getting out and it's going to make you feel worse actually um, so things like clay like bentonite clay or activated charcoal or something like inulin powder or psyllium husk these are going to be things that bind to toxins uh, in the bile system and helps you pull them out now really aggressive the most aggressive way to do this would be to work with a naturopath to do a uh, more targeted chelation right so this is things like dmsa and edta sometimes doing it orally uh, or sometimes using an iv i've actually done iv chelation for lead twice and it really helped both times it's also very very hard on your body like it uh it really aggressively pulls heavy metals out of your tissues and uh in looking back you know i I have mixed feelings about whether I have regrets on that because I do think that it did damage uh, some of my organs and I've had to recover from that, uh, but it also made a really big difference in my symptoms. So I wonder if I had gone about it a little more gently, a little more long-term with some of these other things that I'm talking about, if that would have been net uh, better, but I, you know, I'll never know. Uh, but that is an option. Uh, it can be very expensive and sometimes it's hard to find a naturopath that will, will do that because um, you know, there are some questions in the scientific world whether that's an appropriate method of treatment or not. Um, but uh, it is an option that you can weigh the pros and cons of yourself. So I hope this was a helpful video in terms of understanding a little bit about uh, how the body might detox heavy metals and how you can support that processing yourself. Like I said, don't jump the gun on this. Like really work to rebuild your immune system and support your detoxification just with these basic dietary and lifestyle protocols and then really start hitting that harder. Uh, if, if those symptoms are stubborn, you know, if you're one to two years in and you're still getting these candida flares, uh, you still have a lot of brain fog and fatigue, that's a sign you really need to push a little harder with this stuff. Uh, and so, um, you can start to focus more in on this. Um, so, uh, I hope that again, that was all helpful. Let me know if you have questions.